What up everyone, this is a real business story about the simple pickup guys on YouTube who've done over a billion views. I met them while I was in LA, there's Kong and Jesse. They shared, how did they go and pick up girls? How did they make videos that went so viral? What were the formulas? I asked them, I was like, yo, I need to know. And they tell you in this video. And three, how they almost do it with no promotion. So check out this episode and enjoy this real business story. If you ever wanted to like see the, you know, the best case study of some people who are not good looking that made millions of subscribers and millions of dollars on YouTube, watch Simple Pickup. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> right fucking here. You guys are literally the epitome of the parents that'd be the most embarrassed about what you do. So my, my parents are Indian, like they're as typical as you could possibly imagine. If you had to guess what my parents did for a living, just think Doctor as, engineer? Think even more cliche, like take oh, it. Oh, 7-Eleven? Yes. My mom didn't really tell anybody that like what I did. She would just lie and say that like I'm still going to school and like getting my degree. Um, and then eventually, once I once she realized I was making money, then she was like very proud about it. And she's like, Oh yeah, he's an yeah. he's an entrepreneur. But what does he do? He's an entrepreneur. <laughs> you know? My parents barely speak English, so they watched the videos and just didn't get it at all. And so they were like, So you're getting these girl's phone numbers and that's it <laughs> <laughs> we went to cal state fullerton we were both business majors and we were like we're not learning anything here so we decided to just start like trying to do businesses ourselves uh, we had this idea to take something that we were already doing which was like you know picking up girls and like you know practicing our social skills and put it on youtube you guys are already doing that like just when you're we... in college yeah that's how we met actually we met on an online forum where guys got together and shared like pickup tips it's like the blind leading the blind. Like you're getting tips from other guys who don't know how to get laid. And it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, this yeah, cesspool yeah. of misinformation and like just shit. Do you guys remember the first time you tried one of those tips or something and it actually worked? It was actually the first time I got a kiss. I, I forgot what line I used. It was something that I read on a forum. I, I, I wish I remembered what it was. But I do remember it working and me thinking, I believe. And I actually remember yours too. Yeah, it was also getting a, a kiss. It was just like this 30 year old lady at a club at an 18 plus club. <laughs> and the line was like, I don't know how to kiss, so I'd like you to teach me. Long story short, she literally gave me a step-by-step -step, like, okay, look, this is how you gotta do it. And after that day, I was like, holy shit, this fucking works. Deep down, we, we were just trying to be more social people. Like we were very, very anti-social. We had social anxiety and it was hard for us to, you know, especially Jesse, it was like hard for us to just talk to the cashier at a supermarket. I was uh, clinically obese and I had like really, really bad acne. Um, so I had like really low self-confidence. I would go into a supermarket and just talking to the cashier would like give me a panic attack. So I had to like overcome first social anxiety, just like the bare bones, just being able to talk to someone and then start practicing, you know, more advanced stuff, yeah. you know? And so do you, would you guys remember the first night you went out? So I met Kong, he had like black nail polish and like a boa around his neck and you know, he was all decked out cause he was like influenced by mystery. Yeah. Remember mystery was, from the DH1 show? Shit. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember what, what the hell I was, I think I was just dressed normally. I mean, just dressed terribly as I normally Yeah. Do. Was it pretty bad? I'm always dressed pretty bad. Like right now I'm just like, yeah. One of my friends actually said to me like, Jesse, you know, it's really cool how you don't give a shit what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is that a compliment? We were like, damn, this is crazy. This, this works. Yeah, this, my wingmans are the best. And so we just started going out with each other after that. We realized like if we put, if we threw in like funny challenges, it might make it even funnier. So uh, the actual first video that we published was uh, called Penis Pickup, where we just tried to drop the word penis as many times as possible in a conversation. Put it on YouTube, obviously no one watched it because we didn't have an audience. So we were like, how do we get people to watch this video? We, we made a spreadsheet with a hundred forums and we created a hundred accounts on each one of the forums and we had a spreadsheet with the passwords and we would log in and just copy paste like our YouTube video onto the forum. And then it just, nothing happened. And then all of a sudden on one of them, which was the bodybuilding.com forum, in the miscellaneous section, we posted it. Misc. The misc. Misc. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we posted it and it just got like over a hundred thousand views. And like, we were like, we're onto something here. So we created the next video. And eventually like our channel became us picking up girls with like funny pickup lines, like weird pickup lines. So we would take things that we saw um, in movies or, you know, on the internet and use- Trending topics. Trending topics. Yeah. So like our most 
Our third video was using internet memes to pick up girls. Cause we were on bodybuilding forums and all they do is just fucking like meme each other all day. So we took like the most trending memes in the bodybuilding forum and we put those in, in the video as pickup Smart. lines. And because we were using like their, their lingo, they took that video and they spread it everywhere. And then from there, we just kept, we just kept going and our audience like grew bigger and bigger. I think people, including myself, I like hearing the reminder from you was like, you have to go fucking promote it. Like we put it on YouTube and I'm just like, or do stuff with Sumo and I'm like, all right, come, come to the party. How do you work backwards from the audience? You know what's interesting? So you mentioned like promotion. Promotion's actually not that important. It's, it's good like to get you the initial like ball rolling. Yeah. But if you have to like over promote your content, that probably means your content sucks. It's not because like you're not promoting it enough. You know, there's some, uh, some part of it that is an art, but there is a lot of science behind it too. So there's a lot of like kind of viral triggers that, that you can activate in, in people's minds. Or if you can incorporate trending topics into your videos, people are already searching it. There's SEO value and people are already talking about it. So people are gonna wanna share it. That's why for a lot of our, video, our pickup videos, we would try to do things that were like in the zeitgeist. Like we would take movies that were, you know, gonna come out, for example, we did like Harry Potter pickup lines when Harry Potter was really popular. Yeah. So you incorporate that into your video, you're not only getting people that are interested in, you know, dating advice, you're getting people that are also like Harry Potter that are watching your videos and that's how you grow your audience. There's another thing called an infotainment, right? Where you don't just give people information, like plenty of people were giving pickup advice. Plenty of people were uh, showing videos of them like picking up girls or whatever, but the way that we uh, made that viral is that we added an entertainment factor to it. And the biggest mistake people make with YouTube channels and like, you know, trying to go viral, trying to get an audience is they, they focus on the small things first, like optimization, like their thumbnails, their titles, like that shit does not matter, right? Like if you're- Well, it matters, but it's like- It's, it's like a five to 10% optimization. Yeah. What you want to try to do is try to get 100,000, 200,000 people watching every single one of your videos. That's like goal number one. From there, you can then like add the little optimizations, like, you know, thumbnails, titles, whatever. And once you're consistently getting 100,000 or a million views per video, now the 10% optimizations That's really good. are going to make a big difference. Where You know why they do that? It's because those are quick wins and it feels good. You know, like it feels good to do that, but in reality, it doesn't have like a big impact on how many views you're getting, how much of an impact you're reaching. So we've started a lot of YouTube channels. If, if the channel is getting, you know, uh, if it's not growing, we call it like a snowball effect where you're your content is you're getting like thousands of subscribers per day each one of your videos is getting more and more views if that doesn't happen within you know three to four months we just kill the channel the question now is like how do you create that yeah. how do you create that content people think i need to come up with like a 100 percent original idea otherwise it's not even worth it so they like close their eyes and try to think of like some wacky shit to do for their channel and you're basically going like from zero to one you know and while that could work the chances of that working are very, 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 very low. So what you want to do is you want to look at what's already working. You can go on Facebook and check out like trending videos. You can go on YouTube, check out trending videos. Look at like things that are already going viral. So for example, um, if you have like a baking channel and you want to make cakes, you can't just like make cakes and say, hey, look at my cake. But what's trending right now is like a lot of Marvel comic book stuff. But what if I combine that with cakes, right? Now I'm gonna make like a Wonder Woman cake. I'm appealing to people that like cakes, which is like a small niche audience, but I'm also appealing to this giant audience of Marvel fans. And that's how you like gain subscribers. The work has already been done for you, right? Like people, like you already, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You already know what's viral. Just use that and obviously don't directly copy it, but remix it into your own niche and put your own twist on it. You have your videos that get capture a wide audience and then you have like your other videos that are meant for your hardcore fans. This, this is pretty much our strategy. We have like our, our viral hits that get us like hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers, but then we have our videos that are more serious that appeal to our true fans. But now that you have like millions of subscribers, you can now make a video that will, would not traditionally go viral, but now that people like you, they'll watch it and you'll still get a you ton of views. sprinkle in the, the more informational, the more serious topics. We, we put out two videos per month for a very, very long time. Actually, yeah, that's true. Those, those are, are you know, our thing. Basically, you wanna create content that's so good that when you do put out a video, your audience is like- I ha like I have to watch like, it. I'm yeah. dying to watch it. And if you, if, if you have that, you can do everything else wrong. Yep and you'll still be big. That's why you see a lot of people who have like shitty thumbnails, shitty titles, and they're still huge. How did you, how have you guys evolved monetizing this traffic thing that you've got, you guys have figured out? So with Simple Pickup, we were able to make a 
pretty substantial amount of money. We at our at our peak, we were doing about two and a half million dollars per year, with 80% of that being like literally profit we just put in our pocket. We had our YouTube uh, channel, and then we had a product that we sold. Um, so the product was the more, uh, it, it was like uh, teaching guys how to be better with women, how to talk to women, how to be better conversationally. You know what's funny? We didn't know what we were doing at first. We didn't like, we knew, we knew how to make the YouTube videos. We didn't know anything about marketing, didn't know anything about business. We still did well because we had so many people watching us and we could have like shitty marketing and we could still, we could still make money. Even before we started our online business, we were doing an offline thing where we were teaching people uh, you know, through boot camps where guys would literally come to LA for a weekend and we would take them out and literally have them talk to strangers, have them talk to women and say, all right, this is how you got to do it. That was kind of the first mistake that we made, which was we tried to make like a live uh, physical product. In our heads, we were like, all right, as soon as we start selling something, our audience is going to hate us and our channel is not going to grow anymore. It's not going to go viral. So that's why we waited so long because we didn't want to sell out, quote unquote. If you're selling something that is of value and that actually is going to impact people's lives and, you know, um, 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 improve it for the better, then people are going to love you for it. So you started selling the Project Go. Yep where you had more advanced training, and it was how much? Um, so we started off with five bucks a month, and we realized, holy shit, we undercharged. So we-, we Well, it was also <laughs> shitty at the beginning. Too, yeah, it was so. like an MVP. So we from there, we, we raised it to 10 and then 15. We eventually settled on 37 after testing like a little bit higher than that, and that was like the sweet spot. Um, and we were making a good amount of money. And uh, we then started adding additional products for, for people because they, they basically were saying like, hey, we want more. So we came up with another product, which was a 30 day online bootcamp. We took like our bootcamp model and turned it into like a month long program. That was like pretty much it, right? Like that was, those were our products. We, we had a couple failed ones though called uh, Simple Mixology. You can actually still buy it to this day. So our whole, the whole concept for that was, man, I hate learning like all of these different drinks. Can somebody just please teach me like the five best drinks to make for dates and like for different occasions? Five of them were completely original. Five of them were like uh, modern takes on, you know, your traditional drinks. But um, yeah, it was just way worse than we thought it was gonna do. And then how did you transition to where Jump Cut came to be the thing? The idea here is that we want to create kind of like an online business school. That's the best way you can think of it. Um, it's, it's teaching, um, entrepreneurship type of topics and business topics that schools should really be teaching but don't teach right yeah, we, we, we dropped out with one semester left in college like one semester you can imagine again for Indian parents like their minds were blown like how the hell did you do that um, but for us it was like once we realized how shitty school was it was like any one more second here is a huge waste of time so we were both business majors they didn't teach you online marketing they don't teach you how to like utilize this fucking internet revolution that's happening and actually make money from it i think we could have made way more money just selling more products with within the dating niche but it's like the money was not really an issue for us anymore we just wanted to um uh do something that had a lot of impact on people's lives right so but just to point out i mean your videos are watched by probably is it a billion total by now just um, with all our channels, yeah, about a billion. I don't know how much more impact you get than a, mil a billion people seeing things that they're laughing and improving their lives from. Totally true. Uh, totally how do you true. trump a billion? Yeah, but he but here's the thing. After you, like, we have, what, like 200 videos on there or something like that? If you watch those 200 videos and then we keep making those, the extra videos have, like, very little impact, right? Because it's the same thing over and over. And it's the same so with, like, like, this way you maybe go. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same with our products. Like more products is not going to, to, to help you at that point. And the first product is how to go viral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we're teaching people what we know best, which is how to start a YouTube channel and go viral. We've had a ton of students go through it, and we've had people that are like going out in the street and getting recognized by like fans now. Um, it's just insane. And most club courses have like some star. Do you have like one or two stars? We have a lot of stars. Yeah. Um, the biggest is probably icing, the, art, the icing artists. Yeah, the icing artists. She'd make cakes and we were like fucking don't make cakes make cakes and put it like about something that people know and like cut down your videos to like make it really snappy she's it's... getting like 10 million views a month now when she joined jump cut she she was getting i think uh 2, views per video on on her youtube channel now she's getting about on average like 500k that's like her it? on her low end yeah yeah 500k views per video jump cut as it is right now was not jump cut when we started. When we started, we wanted to be like uh, a Buzzfeed. Yeah, we started a bunch of channels that like ended up going super viral. 
and we had we, we like found talent in Hollywood to be the faces of those channels. Yeah, and Hacks of Life, Simple, Sexy, Stupid, Human uh, Experiment, Human like, Experiments, Drunk Tech Review. Yeah, we had like all yeah, these channels like getting altruist. millions of views, and we were like, okay, this is good, but this is like slow. You know, like we have to like find somebody, build the channel up. It's really hard to manage the talent. Too. Yeah. So there are a lot of problems with that business model. But what we learned from that was we know how to make viral videos. Like we know how to consistently make viral videos in different niches, niches, however you want to say it. How was it giving up Simple Pickup? When you are creating a viral, or when you're creating videos weekly, right? Uh, you get that instant gratification every single week of people watching your video saying, I love this, this is so hilarious. Sometimes it gets published on like Buzzfeed or blogs or Reddit or whatever. And um, so I kind of miss that, honestly, because um, like with Simple Pickup, it was just, hey, let's teach guys dating advice and let's make money, right? But now we kind of have this really bigger vision and I, I think it's more fulfilling to kind of come in uh, to work every single day. It amazed me how open these guys were with their business. So they shared exact strategies on how they grew a viral business. They talked about how much money they made. They talked about their biggest mistakes and they were super honest about the whole process all along. But check out their site, jumpcut.com and keep an eye out for more videos soon. Make sure you go hit subscribe and let me know in the comments who you want me to do a real business stories with next.